Peekaboo. Hey guys, Anthony, 4B4 Diesel. Quick video, um, basically to help everyone out, so you know what to do and what not to do after you've had either your engine replaced or your injectors replaced. So whether you've done it yourself or had someone do the injectors, whether you've uh, you know got a rebuilt engine or a brand new long motor, we only recommend the brand new long motor, the genuine, the full long motor from Japan, from Toyota, is in genuine Toyota parts. Bada bing, no problems, right? It's pretty much the best value for money. So if you've had your engine replaced one way or another, or your injectors, and these are the top tips so that you don't uh, run into any other problems. Now, we've covered it in other videos. You can check our injector information playlist, stuff like that. Check out our other playlists. It could be information in there that you need. But look, the key thing is, once you've had that inje those injectors replaced or that engine replaced, you don't want anybody taking the fuel pipes off, in my opinion, right? So fuel pipes, you know what I'm talking about? You know these things here, fuel pipes here, they go from the common rail to the injectors. You've seen it before in our other videos. If you haven't seen our other videos, subscribe, turn the bell on, make sure you see that information. There's a whole lot of education there for everyone. And this is one tiny piece of that million piece jigsaw puzzle. Well, we're working towards a million pieces anyway. So don't take the fuel pipes off. Why? That risk of contamination, we've shown it in videos where the pipes could come off and that dirt rent from around those nuts at the end of the pipe, the nozzle seals and all that can get to the inlets of the injectors. Not worth it. Why would you be taking them off? Because every 40,000 kilometers by the book in the Toyota, you know, the owner's manual service log, every 40,000 kilometers, a lot of engines, including this engine, the 1K the FTV, excuse me, I think I need a drink, too much work, not enough, uh, not enough fluids. <clears throat> like, like usual, isn't it? isn't it always a <clears throat> in the video? But anyway, you get that, it's probably the problem, isn't it? Too busy, not enough fluid. We'll get onto that in a moment. But yeah, we, we don't want that contamination happening. Now, yeah, so the reason why, yeah, the 40,000 K valve clearance check. Oh, so what are you saying? Am I saying not to do that? Dead set right I am. As long as you follow my advice and um, you know, you don't have the catch can, you know, the catch can here, catch can. If you've got a catch can, you're not following my advice. So you can sort of just take it with a grain of salt, mix it up with some other people's information and do whatever you want, because you've really got to choose who to listen to here. And this is where I urge you subscribe, turn the bell on, hit the like button and stop wasting your time listening to some other people's stuff. Because you know what? <laughs> They're just dreaming some of the stuff they put in videos, right? So why do we say not to? Because We've seen thousands of these engines, thousands of them, you know, doing injector jobs or engines or for clients, you know, whether it's, you know, wh whatever the case may be. This is what we do. For about 10 years now, we've been pretty much only 1KD FTV. You know, not, not exactly only, but pretty close. I'd say at least 90% for 10 years, right? So um, we do know a bit about them from that, you know, from that experience. We've got a lot of knowledge. So we're pretty wise on what to do and what not to do. And there's no secrets. We're here to tell you the information to save you money. So look, don't. So if you take it for somewhere for service, because you're certainly not doing your own, because you're, you know, not mechanically minded sort of, you know, you haven't got that, you know, you haven't got that, you know, you know what I mean? You just haven't got the touch. You're not going to touch it. Then just make sure if you go and so if you get a new engine at say 150K, no worries. And then you get a 160k service and they pull the fuel, oh no, or even at 200,000 fuel pipes, oh, you know, you've been out in the outback dirt, dust and sand on the beaches, spraying over and in the inter intercooler and down onto the valve cover. Trust me, it happens, we see it. Even on clean cars, we've got a bit of stuff in there and the dirty ones are really dirty, right? The last thing you want, you're gonna end up with more problems, you're gonna be replacing the injectors again, if not your engine again, okay? So it is high risk taking those fuel pipes off whatsoever. That's why, personally, we don't like to take the fuel pipes off unless we're replacing the injectors, really, you know? Now, we can do it. We'll, we'll probably do it better than anyone taking the time and the care to get them out clean, but you know what? It's not something we like to do. So, so how often do we check the valve clearances, you ask? So, well, seven years, 170, does it make sense? That is our ballpark guide on when to replace injectors on a lot of common rail diesels, um, including the 1KD. There's a few variables there, explained in more detail in other videos and probably again here on this channel. So as I keep saying, subscribe, turn the bell on. The re reason I keep saying is I don't really care about it as a YouTube channel. I more care about trying to reach out to reach to the people to share the right information so that I don't keep so busy. You know, if I can get you all educated so you do the right thing, we'll be less busy. We're too busy, we've got way too much going on, making way too much money, 
Ah, that got your attention, didn't it? No, sort of just joking around. There's no such thing as too much. But look, to be honest, I'd rather share it around because, uh, you know, if everybody else can do the right work, uh, then happy days, right? Then we're less busy and everybody gets their share. And if you want to do it, do it yourself, that's, that's awesome as well. So, what else? That leads me to the latest little love letter here. So let's just have a quick day, Anthony. Returning on use path loan items, and auto injectors, little something for you to say thanks. Bloody beautiful. Thank you very much. Somebody that listens, I love it. Okay, um, so the point of this is, these injectors have been returned. You get a free contamination check. All of our clients who uh, get their injectors replaced or even just get the injector kit, you return them, we do a free contamination check. The reason is, if you've had water in your fuel, whatever, from the internal parts, we can tell that, and then we might come back to you and say, hey, you know, you need to uh, clean out your fuel system, your filters, your tanks, whatever, or we might just discuss a little bit. If you don't hear anything, no news is good news, and once again, thank you very much. What do we got here? Okay, so we've got someone made a couple of... Uh, made a couple of tools, whatever, you can pause and read that if you really need to, but basically he's just saying he's made these couple of tools. Now, this one, he might not have seen the videos yet, but this looks very much like our compression test tool. Do you remember, who remembers our compression test tools, four compression testers, um, kaon.com.au, they made those for us many years ago. We got those designed from Kaon and they manufactured those. They were made from steel. This is uh, some sort of, uh, I don't know what it is actually, it's some sort of plastic. But, um, and also the other good one is this bar he's made, you know, cause I've never really bothered, but for stuck injectors, right? So I haven't used it yet, but I'm assuming this is gonna fit. Let's just do it right now. Look at this over there, you know, it's not a spot on fit, but oh yeah. No, it's, it actually gets on down over this part here. So that, yeah, so you're not actually on the threads. Not that you'd ever want to use stuck injectors again anyway, but obviously a really good tool for twisting injectors back and forth so there's a good idea all you need to do is uh whoever made this for me here right it's in the letter here but um andrew um if you can if you remember just put the uh inside di diameter in the uh in the comments and butter bing now back to the vehicle what to do what not for those that really wanted to know i measured it for you it was 16 mil was the inside diameter or the size of that injector uh inlet there where you want to in case you wanted to make up a little tool like that for if in case you have stuck injectors if you left them too long when would that normally happen usually over 200,000 kilometers but uh okay so what else so that's the the, the key thing you don't want any of that coming off Nobody wants to be working on it, touching anything major like that again. If you've had an engine done, if we do it, the whole BFE part's done, you know, water pump, time about oil, the tension to cam seal, the main drive belt, the bearings. It's not even an option anymore. We just do it, gets new glow plugs. Basically, it's like a new heart in the beast and all the major works are done. So all you need to do is oil changes, coolant changes we recommend. There's no such thing, as, well, there is so much to, the thing is too much, but Look, if the coolant costs you 80 bucks and you do it every two years, it's cheap insurance, isn't it, for all those components, radiator in your engine, you know, head gaskets, all your alloys, your Welsh plugs, your heater cores, you know, it's like it's a no-brainer, mate. That's what I do in my vehicles anyway. Your air filter, we've got a k &N in this one now, we've got a k &N in the 120, you can do what you want, people, you know, we've got information in videos, again, check the playlist, it'll be an air filters playlist, at least one or two or whatever. So oil and filter, air filters, Fuel filter, let's just talk about this fuel filter because Toyota, in their wisdom, kept changing their minds about what to do, right? So this one, in this vehicle, I think it didn't actually have a schedule. So fuel filters, traditionally, the underbonnet one, most manufacturers, including Toyota, was every 40,000 k's for this one, which I think's pretty good. Um, but for whatever reason, whatever year it was, I can't remember. Let's just say two, uh, 2011, for example, you'd look, when to change it, Mate, there's not, this is the only fuel filter on a Hilux, and guess what? There's no, it was basically pressure sensor when the light came on, whatever, right? So so they had before and after, you know, they changed their mind. So we recommend every 40,000 or once a year, whichever comes first. Traditionally for me, I'll do it, like this one from Toyota Genuine, it's about 40 bucks, it's cheap, right? So stick with Genuine on that one. Um, oh, look, for me, I say we do a, a few trips throughout the year, and sort of the June, July after that trip is when I like to change the filter, the middle of the year trip. That's when I'll change it. I'll take the spare with me on trips for the whole year and then it gets to July, I'll change it then, right? If I haven't done a lot, maybe I'll leave it two years, but you know, whatever comes first, a year or two, 40,000 Ks, all depending how many Ks you do. So look, that pretty much covers it. That's all, all your normal service, obviously, diff oils. I'm just talking around the engine bay, what you need to do. Once you've got that job done, 
these things are such an awesome engine. There's not much you need to do. There's not much you need to look for. You need to be very careful who you let work on it. Otherwise, you'll be faced with other problems. You could be really unlucky and turbos go every now and then. You know what I mean? You know your front wheel bearings, but that's not part of the engine. Even the turbo, really, it's a separate component. But there's nothing to do here. There's nothing to see here. So thanks for watching. Um, we'll have some more videos coming soon. Hit the like button, subscribe, turn the bell on, bada bing, bada boom, and all of that, right? Now, we're not trying to sell or do engines, but if you do need an engine, these are the key things I'll tell you. We will only supply a brand new long motor. Um, soon we're going to be keeping some engines in stock so we're ready to go. Um, uh, if you need an injector kit because you want to do your injectors, Monday mornings from 7.30 a.m. with that text message. Get it done in the morning by 11 a.m. if you can. So that covers for WA as well, nice and early for you guys. And you'll get us before the end of the morning. That way we've got the rest of the day to finish getting all those kits packed and sent. Uh, first paid, first serve. If the money's in, they get packed. gets packed in that order. It'll get done Monday. It'll get done Tuesday. It'll get done Wednesday. It'll get done when we get round to it. Please don't contact us from Wednesday around uh, midday until Monday morning, 7.30 a.m., unless invited to do so because we're very busy trying to get things done, bada bing, and we just can't keep going to the phone for text messages. If you need help with anything, it's our Facebook groups. Use it as a resource. And if you're in the VIP group, just about every night I go and check the VIP group. If you're not getting a response, tag me. Plus, remember, there's over a 1,000 other VIPs there that have done similar jobs that can help you out with that. It's a good place to be. That's probably why people come to me. Bada bing, that's it. I think I talked enough. Catch you on the next one. See ya.